I feel like I became a woman on that on that set. These are all young, successful black men and the level of respect and care, consideration that they showed for me and the other Dominique Thorne, who's also in the movie, was incredible. It was never ego, it was never disrespectful, it was always kind and supportive, and Shaka made, made my voice matter, um, allowed me to be heard and always gave credit where it was due. Man, if, if only every movie experience was like that for everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jazz Tanke, and thank you for joining me for this Black Women of Award Season conversation. Today, I'm joined by Rashida Jones, star of On the Rocks, and Dominique Fishback, star of Judas and the Black Messiah. When was the first time you remember feeling seen for your work? I was just talking about college, and, you know, I wasn't going to act. I was going to try to be a lawyer and go to law school, and I was dealing with some depression, my sophomore year and I and I did a couple plays and one of them was uh for color girls and and that was the first time I remember feeling like if you work really hard and you work with a good director and a great cast you can make something that feels intimate and personal and yours but that belongs to this kind of longer lineage of greatness and of artistry and then all of a sudden like you're just now you're just part of that the the narrative of like that play and what that play means to people having like a like a heavy monologue to to dig into and having to talk directly to an audience um was probably the first time that i at least felt like i was capable of something great that could have an impact on people i'm from brooklyn east new york but my mom is a my mom was a school teacher for 31 years so fortunately she always i, I would write little poems when i was like 12 and she would say down like where did where did that come from you know and so I always felt like okay maybe I got something but I, then you still like oh that is your mom though right so I think I think um I started acting in a theater program called MCC's Youth Company in New York where they took kids from inner city youth around New York City did like from one from freshman year of high school to one year after you graduate high school and where you could act and write your own stuff but in order to act you had to write your own stuff so I was 15 and I was learning myself on stage and they say, your voice matters. What do you want to say? How do you want to say it? So I think from a young age that kind of stayed with me. So I would navigate the world moving forward, like knowing that I had a voice, knowing that I, you know, and so when people tried to take it away, I was so defensive. Now it was so hard, like, no, that's not my voice. You know, like, <laughs> I had to learn how to do it in more constructive ways, I guess, but. <laughs> how did you from such a young age know that you had to protect that. Ultimately, I knew that if I didn't have anything else, I had my, my voice and my words, you know, our, our words live forever. I struggled a lot with that too, because I was like, I don't, you know, I don't want to seem ungrateful. You know, right. I'm grateful to be here. You know, so many people don't get to be here. So I am grateful, but also just because I'm grateful doesn't mean I have to be walked over. Well, your character, Laura, and on the rocks has that line, like you have to start listening to women's voices. Oh, yes. Did you have an experience like that where you had to say like, listen to my voice, don't erase my voice. No, never in Hollywood have I ever felt a racist a woman. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've had that experience many times in my career, in my life. I think similar to Dom, I feel like I had a lot of support at home. Like everybody at home listened to me. My mom and my dad were like, you you are important. You have something to say and, and you should say it. So I think I was a little bit shocked when I came, came, you know, at odds with it in my career, especially with like writing. I think it's kind of good that I was shocked because I didn't, it, it didn't even occur to me that there's a reason that I should be shut down. Uh, and and then it was, it made it very clear to me that it, ha you know, I, I would always check in with myself first and say, think, wait, is that a bad idea? Or, you know, am I talking out of turn? But, but the fact that it was, it was such a pattern, I realized it had, it had nothing to do with me. It was like a, you know, there's a systemic thing at work that I just happened to be, you know, not reaping the benefits from. So yeah, there's been many times in my career, I'll say something, I'll have an idea and it's like just washed over. And then, 
an hour later, 30 minutes later, a day later, like a white man says it and everybody's like, what a great idea. <laughs> what a great idea. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think I, I, I try to take those things in stride and I've let it, I've, I've tried to let it build character and not bitterness for me because, you know, the truth is there is, there's still some of it and it's better. It's definitely better. I feel like from the pipe, find the studio level to the casting level to the de development level everybody's eye in the business is towards showing better and you know more accurate representation of like our actual demography in this country that including women that including women of color so there is more room to have that conversation people are more anxious to be like what do you actually think what do you have to say and how is that different from what we think you have to say. Like there's 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 an appetite now, which is really nice. But yeah, it's it's been, it's a long process, you know. How can Hollywood break down, you know, those narratives and how have you found, found ways to break that down for yourself? Just in the presence of, of Dom and, and thinking about the movies this year, like last time I was thinking, you know what's so beautiful about the movies this year is there is like, Black voices and Black filmmakers and the representation of Black people on screen and Black women on screen, it's its really its really diverse. Judas and the Black Messiah, next to the 40-year-old version, next to On the Rocks, next to Ma Rainey. I mean, that's like beautiful spread. Like that's, nobody can kind of decide what it looks like to be a Black woman because they're all very different things. And like your performance in that movie the girlfriend of this person who's the chairman, he's the man. There's so much opportunity there to flatten out that character, to just make her, you know, I'm, I love you, baby, I support you, whatever you want. But that relationship was real. And your reaction, your relationship with him and the Panthers and, you know, your, your pregnant body and everything was, it felt, it felt honest and it felt complicated. That to me was the soul of the movie. The movie wouldn't be as beautiful as it is if it didn't have that in you, you know? Shaka King, when I first met with him, he said, I wrote this role for you. I want you to have it. So read the script and let me know your thoughts, you know? So I read the script and I gave him a whole long email about everything that I loved. And then I said, well, I have two thoughts, but I don't want to overstep. So please let me know if you want to hear them. And he said, "You oh, you'll be playing her. You can't overstep. And one of the things that I said was, you know, one of the first things she says to Fred is, do you like poetry? And the Panthers were very poetic people, yet we don't hear a poem. And I think we miss an opportunity. And he said, I think you're right. Do you want to take a shot at that poem? And so the poem in the movie, I, I wrote it. Yours? Yeah. Oh my God, you're such a good writer. Thank you. I want to I share something with you. Like the masses, I was in awe when I first laid eyes on all the things you are. You know, I'm very aware of how black women are portrayed in the media, especially when it comes to love. And, you know, in, in the romances with the white women, the guy sees them and all of a sudden he's head over heels, he wants to do anything and everything for her. She never has to prove herself. But with black women, we have to stand by them through jail or we get pregnant or we, we show some kind of resilience that makes us worthy or honorable of their love or their affection or their loyalty or their dedication. And I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted to make sure that we knew that Fred loved her for her mind, for her intellect, you know, and Shaka said, you're right. And so we worked on the, the I call it the Malcolm scene together when they first kind of, you know, engage over the, the intellect of, of, of Malcolm X. Shaka's smart because he let you be a part of it and it made his movie better, you know, like that's, that's the thing I think when we talk about like, you know, the, the resistance to change the change for the most part, it rounds it out. Like everybody gets to celebrate the win of that. You know, you just have to be generous enough to like let the good stuff happen. And he was, and, and, and it's to his benefit, you know? I knew we make noise. I just thought of being in the streets. Why is that important for you to like take that next step and be like, I'm gonna tell my story, I'm gonna get behind the lens. Well, one, I never wanted to be a director. When I was on a deuce, you know, season one, I wanted to be in the writer's room and they were like, well, we don't really want the actors to know what's gonna happen with the story, but you could shadow a director. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll take the opportunity. And I really 
I really, it was like, I mean, it was interesting, but I was like, I'm definitely not going to do it. I go, I'll write and let somebody else do that. And then I got the opportunity to go to Sundance with an indie film called Night Comes On that I did with Jordana Sparrow. And while I was filming the indie, I would ask her, oh, what, what's, that, what's that camera lens? What, what is that? And she said, you say you're not going to be a director, but you know, you at, you're asking all of these questions. And I said, okay. But when I got to Sundance and I saw all the women directors and creators and, oh, what would it mean to have com- complete control over your story? Because like they say, as a writer, once you kind of like sell it, right? Like it goes into other people's hands. What would that be like? And I guess, Rashida, you could like tell me more about, about the experience. I've done both things. I've, you know, I have uh, directed things that I've written and I've not directed things I've written. And I, I think it's just about, you know, who you collaborate with and who you trust and I and I feel you because I sort of similarly I for a long time I was like I don't want to direct I don't want to direct I don't want to direct that's not my medium but I think part of it was feeling like there is some sort of authority that you have to have um a vision that you have to have that that might make you unlikable to some people or where you have to like assert yourself so much in other people's space that I just, I wasn't sure I would be, I was well suited for that. My energy was well suited, but it, there's all different types of directors, you know, like mm-hmm. Sophia, she's such a quiet force. Sophia, mm-hmm. Cole, the way she directs is like, it's so beautiful to watch because her sets are so, it's so comfortable to be around her. There's no attitude. Everybody treats each other with respect and she still manages to create the world she wants to create. It is very much her vision in her movie. When you get to be a part of a film or a project that's as good, that's this good, you know, for both of you, like how does that impact like the next project that you want to take on? It, it actually kind of, I feel, I feel very spoiled because I, like I did get to start in TV doing, I did show me Hero with David Simon and then write to the Deuce with David Simon, such a, uh, an amazing creator, writer, and then got to do, now I get to do Judas and the Black Messiah. And so it almost feels like, I mean, I'm very blessed and I, and I, and I pray it keeps happening like that. But it was, it's also like, well, what am I going to do next? I really love comedy. When I was 10, I used to stay up really late and watch I Love Lucy. And she, in fact, was the reason why I wanted to act. I'd be like, I could do that. I want to I want to be like Lucy. I too, I, I think I came into it through comedy. I was always, from a very young age, I was obsessed with sketch comedy. And I my parents would let me stay up and watch Saturday Night Live and... I watched SCTV and um, I just loved, I loved the the flexibility that comedians had where they could play lots of different characters and they would, they would immediately, they jump into the joke and you, and you know, know, know what their point of view was in a joke. So for me, like I always wanted to be in like a comedy ensemble. So, mm-hmm. and I got incredibly lucky, you know, twice working with Greg Daniels and Mike Schur and being on the office and Parks and Recreation. I mean, it really was, Parks, especially like six years with that group of people, that deep bench of comedians, everybody's so funny in their own very specific way. I learned so much from that so fast about comedy. But, um, and I think it's probably like an opposite thing for me where I do also have this other muscle, this drama muscle that I, that I haven't gotten a chance to use as often as an actress. And you know, I I kind of like sit somewhere in the middle, and I I think S- Sophia her tone is kind of like somewhere in the middle, and I've I've found these things like I don't want to be void of emotion and void of honesty, but I like the I like when you can turn on a hairpin from comedy to something tragic because that's what life's like. I mean, yeah. I've laughed through the darkest days of my life, so and that's what's really beautiful about. Judas is like, and, and that comes through, like it, you're buoyant in that movie. My character, who's Mama Kua now, she was 19 years old. I'm a huge Romeo and Juliet fan and R- Juliet is my like dream role, one of them. So when I think about their youth and I think about sometimes when people play them, they all, they play the end at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. But where is the, you, and I saw my little brother who was in high school at the time play Romeo. And I said, oh, this is what it looks like when somebody closer to the age plays because he's laughing, he's making jokes, he's charismatic he's only he's only deaf or sad when it comes to that and so like for them I'm like where is the moments where she is a girl you know so that's why in the Malcolm scene where she's like he's like doing the Malcolm X voice and she's like like laughing and stuff I really felt I really felt that like 
giggling and stuff, like that's important. Been busy? Yeah, Dean's traveling with clients all the time and I'm just the buzzkill waiting to schedule things. Just, I'm so stuck. So Dean's going away a lot, huh? On business trips? Dad. One thing I wanted to ask you about the film was, was it a conscious choice? Because, uh, you know, I had, I had anxiety, okay? I'm like, I'm like, is he is he doing this, right? Is he, I can't, <laughs> like, there where you went to Mexico, I was like, please no, it like, I'm like, no. And then, anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. At the end, when, when, it, when it was not what I would have thought, was it a conscious effort to make sure that we didn't yeah. perpetuate that story in, in, in matrimony for Black men and Black families, unions? Yeah, I mean, we definitely talked a lot about how we could just be a Black family on screen. Like, it was important for us that it felt like our relationship was real and that our Blackness wasn't, like, it wasn't ignored, you know? We just wanted to show something that subverted expectation. Sometimes it just takes having a black family living on screen, having a life, talking about their relationship and going through things that everybody goes through to just help kind of open the spectrum of what's possible so that it doesn't feel like there's stereotypes like burdening everybody at every moment you know, of the day. The beginning of my career, like in the 90s, because of my name and I think the way I look and my, you know, my dumb straight hair just like you know and just whatever like I would go to castings and people would make assumptions about what I was going to look like and I didn't look like that and there wasn't like a ton of mixed representation on tv at the time and I was auditioning mainly for tv and I think every time I'd get a part I would like hold my breath until I read the whole script and was like oh my god am I gonna have to have a conversation with the director or the producers or something because like I need to be represented right. Like you can't, you can't just like plug me into an Italian family. You can't just plug me, you know, like you have to consider me and my family and what's important to me. And so like, just the fact that I can have those conversations now openly and everybody's like, yeah, cool. Of course. Yes. We want this to feel real, like the real world. Like that's such a huge relief for me. And it was not like that the first 10 years of my career because A, I didn't have the power, you know, I would like get a, a bit role, whatever here, but B, I was just like, you know, I think I was scared to feel like, um, like I was like, you know, freedom fighting in a place where I, I didn't have a lot of authority. Dominique, you've said working on Judas and the Black Messiah has changed your life. How has it changed? How has it changed my life? I feel like I became a woman on that, on that set with those people. Um, one thing that I, I really, I really like to say each time that I get was that I, I feel like I learned how I, first of all, it's like a boys club, right? So I'm nervous about going, are my jokes going to land? Are they going to include me in their little rendezvous or whatever you call it? Right. Like, <laughs> like, am I going to be in, included? And, and that wasn't an issue at all. And like, these are all young, successful black men in a level of respect and care consideration that they showed for me and the other Dominique Thorne, who's also in the movie, was incredible. It wasn't that I thought anything less, but it was just so many men, so many young Black men. And it, it was never ego. It was never disrespectful. It was always kind of supportive. And we spent so much time together. I mean, offset. We were, we were together all the time. And so that wasn't an issue, you know? And so, um, but I, I say that I really learned how to trust black men in this in this uh, film? One, because Shaka made made my voice matter, um, allowed me to be heard, and always gave credit where it was due. Man, if if only every movie experience was like that for everybody, <laughs> what a great what a great thing! Like, and also the movie's great; it's so beautiful. You know, I was learning from so many different people, and I like I journaled the 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 green book that you see her carry around in the film is is a book that I really journaled in, and I, so I would. I would make poems for every, like for the first time she sees Fred, the first time they kiss. And I have it right here. I carry it, every, I carry it everywhere with me. And I would share these poems with, with Charles King. They would make time for that. But like, oh, I just wrote a poem about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, let me hear it. Wow. You know? Wow. Wow. I love that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> right? Wow. Yeah. The other thing I'm going to say is the two yes. men have to do comedy together. Yes. That's my request. <laughs> you heard it here first. I would love that. It was actually just like, I'm like searching my brain. I'm like not even here because I'm like, what can I write for Tommy? For us together. Please. 
On a lighter note, what is your sign? I'm a Pisces with a Capricorn moon and a Capricorn rising. Ooh, okay. What are you? What's your sign? I'm an Aries sun. Ooh. I'm a Gemini moon, so inside me. And then I'm a Taurus rising. Is that how you pick your projects? I mean, like, how do you pick your projects? I study my like, chart. Do you look at the director, <laughs> the producer, based on, like, their star signs? Like, what yeah. makes you say yes <laughs> to a script? Well, I don't like to be, I don't like to be one thing. So I think I, I tend to not say yes to something that looks too similar to something I've done before. Same. I, I also feel like the roles kind of pick me. And a lot of times with these particular characters who are seen as quote unquote ghetto or whatever you want to call it, we don't get to see the, the levels to them. And mm -hmm. so I was like, if I get that part, it's because I'm supposed to do it because I'm going to be aware of this. That was yeah, so fun. I'm so yeah. happy to meet you. I'm, I'm going to come find you, Dominique. Please, please do. I, I, I can't wait to work with you and create with you.